Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we will learn about the voltage control oscillator. So as its name suggests, it is an oscillator whose frequency can be controlled by the external voltage. Now in the conventional oscillator, the frequency of the oscillation can be selected by the passive components like the resistive capacitor and the inductor. And by changing the values of these passive components, it is possible to change the oscillation frequency. So in the conventional oscillator, if we want to change the frequency, then we need either a variable resistor or the variable capacitor and manually we need to tune these components to change the frequency. So this voltage control oscillator also needs these passive components for the frequency generation but with the given set of passive components, just by changing the control voltage or the tuning voltage, it is possible to change the oscillation frequency. So we can say that the voltage control oscillators are much easier to tune compared to the conventional oscillators. And in fact, if we want to tune the VCO using the microcontroller, then also it is possible. For example, if the digital to analog converter is interfaced with the microcontroller, then using the microcontroller, the output of the DAC can be changed and by applying that voltage to the VCO, it is possible to change the frequency. So these voltage control oscillators can change or tune the frequency in a particular range but commercially available VCOs can work from few hertz to even tens of gigahertz. And because of that, they are widely used in the communication applications. So they are used in the modulation and the demodulation circuits as well as in the frequency synthesizers and the function generators. And these VCOs are integral part of the phase lock loop. So there are two types of VCOs. One is the harmonic oscillator and the second is relaxation oscillator. So this harmonic oscillator generates the sinusoidal signals while the relaxation oscillators generates either a square, triangular or the sawtooth waves. And commercially, both types of oscillators are available in the IC packages. Now theoretically, any harmonic oscillator can be converted into the VCO. For example, instead of tuning the resistor or the capacitor manually, if any of them is replaced by the voltage control element, then they can be used as a voltage control oscillator. For example, in the tank circuit of the culprit oscillator, if the capacitors are replaced by the varactor diodes, then it can be used as a VCO. So if you have followed the previous video on the varactor diode, then you must be aware that the varactor diode acts as a variable capacitor. That means as we change the applied reverse bias voltage across this diode, then the capacitance of this diode will change. And by changing this reverse bias voltage, we can change the oscillator frequency. Now for any type of RC or the LC oscillator, the frequency is proportional to 1 divided by square root of C. And for the varactor diode, as we increase the voltage, then the capacitance of the diode will reduce. That means as we increase the control voltage, then the frequency of oscillation will increase. So as shown in the figure, this F0 is the nominal frequency when the control voltage is equal to V0. So when we change the voltage from V minimum to V maximum, then the frequency of oscillation will change from F minimum to F maximum. And here, if the control voltage is also varying with the time, then mathematically, the frequency of oscillation can be given by the following expression. So here, F0 is the nominal frequency of oscillation while this voltage Vc is the control voltage. And this K is known as the tuning gain or the tuning sensitivity of the VCO. So it defines by what amount the frequency of the oscillation will change when we change the control voltage by the 1 volt. And it is defined by the unit of Hertz divided by volt. So this is about the voltage controlled harmonic oscillators. So now let us talk about the relaxation oscillators. So in a relaxation oscillator, by changing the charging current of the capacitor, it is possible to tune the frequency. So in this type of oscillators, the charging current is proportional to the tuning voltage. That means by controlling this tuning voltage, we can change the rate at which this capacitor charges. Now using the Smith trigger, the voltage across the capacitor is compared with some reference voltage. And when this voltage across the capacitor reaches this reference voltage, then the output of the Smith trigger will change. 
and with the change in this smith trigger output the polarity of this reference voltage as well as the direction in which this capacitor charges will also change so in this circuit if we see the output of the smith trigger then it will be a square wave while if we see the voltage across this capacitor then it will be the triangular wave so here the frequency of this waveform can be controlled by the tuning voltage so many voltage control oscillator ICs work on this principle and even very popular IC566 also works in the similar fashion not only that with a little tweak even a triple five timer IC can also be used as a voltage control oscillator so in the earlier videos of the triple five timer we had seen that how it can be used as a stable multi vibrator and in that circuit we had seen that usually this control pin is grounded via the capacitor but instead of that if we apply the external voltage to this pin then we can change the threshold voltage of the timer circuit so if we see the internal diagram of the triple five timer and usually at this point the reference voltage is equal to 2 by 3 vcc but whenever we apply the voltage at this control pin then this voltage can be overridden by this control voltage so in a way we can change the threshold voltage of the timer and using this we can change the output frequency of the timer so this is the working principle of the different voltage control relaxation oscillators so now let us see some of the important specifications of the vco so these are the specifications which we need to consider while selecting the vco for the specific application the first specification is the tuning range and it defines the range over which the frequency of the vco can be tuned so in a data sheet the manufacturers provides the range of the control voltage and the corresponding tuning range for example for a one vco when the control voltage is varied from 0.5 volt to the 20 volt then the frequency can be changed from 40 megahertz to 80 megahertz so we can say that for that particular vco the tuning range is from 40 megahertz to 80 megahertz that the next specification is the tuning sensitivity or the tuning gain and as i said earlier it defines by what amount the frequency of the vco can be changed when we change the control voltage by the 1 volt and it is defined in terms of the hertz per volt so for a one vco if the tuning gain k is equal to 2 megahertz per volt then we can say that when the voltage will change by the 1 volt then the frequency of the oscillator will change by the 2 megahertz now this tuning sensitivity may not be constant over the entire tuning range and as shown in the figure it may vary with the control voltage so in data sheet manufacturer specifies the typical range of the tuning gain instead of the specific value for example over here the tuning gain varies from 2 megahertz per volt to the 4 megahertz per volt then the next specifications are the supply pushing and the load pulling and these two specifications are important for the high frequency vcos so the supply pushing defines the change in the output frequency with the change in the supply voltage now ideally for any voltage control oscillator even if there is a change in the supply voltage then there should not be any change in the output frequency but actually the output frequency does change with the change in the supply voltage so the change in the frequency due to this supply voltage is known as the supply pushing and it is defined in the unit of hertz per volt so the effect of this supply pushing can be minimized by using the regulated power supplies and further it can be minimized if we use the oscillator circuits which has a high q factor similarly now let us see what is load pulling so ideally for any vco even if there is a any change in the load then that should not affect the output frequency but actually the output frequency does change with the change in the load and that change in the frequency with the load is known as the load pulling so in data sheet usually it is defined as the maximum deviation in the frequency from the nominal frequency then the next very important specification is the spectral purity now whenever this term is referred in the time domain then it is referred as the jitter and whenever it is referred in the frequency domain then usually it is referred as the phase noise so first of all let us talk about the spectral purity in terms of the jitter now ideally at a particular voltage 
the VCO should generate only a single frequency. So if we see the signal in the time domain, then there should not be any change in the amplitude as well as the periodicity. But in reality, if you see, there is some uncertainty in the waveform in terms of the periodicity. And this uncertainty is referred as the jitter. Similarly, now let us see the same term in the frequency domain. So as I said, ideally, the oscillator should generate only a single frequency, right? But due to the different types of noises, if we see the actual response of the oscillator, then it would look like this. So basically, this phase noise represents the random fluctuation in the phase of the output waveform. And because of this random fluctuation, the spectrum looks like this. So this noise level or the noise floor should be much lower than the actual signal. And it is particularly important when the VCOs are used for the modulation and the demodulation in the communication systems. So while demodulating the two signals, the phase noise of one signal should not affect the nearby signal. For example, as shown in the figure, this weak carrier signal got suppressed by the phase noise of the strong carrier signal. So that is why this phase noise is very important specification. Now this phase noise is measured with respect to the carrier power and it is measured at the certain offset from the carrier frequency. So if F0 is the carrier frequency, then the phase noise at F0 plus delta F is the noise power in a 1 hertz bandwidth at the F0 plus delta F. So in the data sheet, this phase noise is represented at the different offsets from the carrier frequency. And this phase noise is measured in the unit of dBc by hertz. So this is all about the different specifications of the VCO. So I hope in this video you understood what is voltage control oscillator and what are the different aspects of the VCO. So if you have any question or suggestion, do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.